I grew up in what I consider to be a magical place. There were monkeys and the giant trees, and the birds came, and they were of all different shapes and sizes and colors. I'm quite sure you wouldn't believe that I'm describing to you a neighborhood in the heart of Nairobi, Kenya's capital city. But the government policy changed, and my neighborhood went from forest to concrete jungle. I would wake up every morning to the sound of chainsaws cutting down everything that I loved, and I'd feel like my bones were breaking. My childhood neighborhood stands silent now. There are no monkeys, and the colorful birds have disappeared. I, like many of you, spend a lot of my time thinking about how to roll back the destruction that has engulfed so much of our world. What is the solution? Lions, an icon of the world in terms of courage and power, are running out of space. They could be gone from the world in a generation. Unfortunately, many people overlook those who live alongside them. Now, I believe I have seen and I know that Africans care for our wildlife. So what is the solution? It is to empower those who have been overlooked, who have been forgotten, in order to keep and grow our lion population. When the world realizes that lion conservation is actually about people, we can begin to roll back this destruction and change the narrative from one of destruction to one of revival. I'm really excited to be here today, and I'm not technically giving a fully woman's empowerment talk. I'm here to tell you about Iwaso Lions, our phenomenal organization, and about lions. So what is happening? I think quite a few of you have attended the talks before this, and you know that there are only 20,000 lions left in Africa. And in my country, Kenya, there are only 2,000. It is actually a notable lion population, because there are only six countries with lion populations above a thousand. This is what we are facing. But, but why? Why is this happening? Well, in order to tell you that, I have to take you home. I have to take you to where we work in East Africa, in northern Kenya, to our spectacular landscape. This is the Iwaso Nyuro River. It is the lifeblood for people for wildlife, for livestock, it is incredible. And in it are three reserves, Samburu, Buffalo Springs, and Shaba. And lions live there. But that's not the full story. 70% of all Kenya's wildlife live outside of national parks. They live with people. So, the people they live with as Belinda has described so aptly, are Samburu, they are Borana, they are Turkana, and Rendile, and they look a lot like this gentleman here and the people that I am with today. And for them, livestock is such an important part of who they are. It is their bank, it is their food, it is such a deep part of their culture that you can barely speak their language without talking about livestock. So when their landscape starts to look a bit more like this, where if you're a lion and you need to move from place to place, unseen, or if you want to raise a family in thick bush, then you will really struggle. And of course, lions need grass. Not because they've become vegetarians, <laughs> but because their food needs food. Their food needs grass. So when you're moving through the landscape, trying to, trying to raise your family or trying to find thick bush or find food, 
and there isn't any, they will run into livestock. Now, as a human being for whom livestock is so important, when this happens, understandably, people are extremely angry, extremely. And they will go out with spears, with guns, and with, with poison, and they will kill lions. This is the greatest threat to lion survival. We're always thinking of, hu of humans as a threat, but I want to talk about what we're doing. And I can think of no better person to tell you about the work that Iwaso Lions is doing to stop this than the man I'm about to introduce. Men like Jenneria are very often relegated to being field officers and not given the complete recognition that they deserve. This is Jenneria. Um, for those of you who know him, you will laugh at this picture. This was him 12 years ago, a man with an idea. And he has come so far from that point. He is now Iwaso Lions Director of Community Conservation. He is... <laughs> he was recently featured on Kenya's largest television station and he was one of three, he is one of three finalists for the Tusk Conservation Awards to be given out next month by Prince William himself. Please welcome with me, General Akilele. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, nothing odd. Hello, everyone. Jumbo. Very happy to be back again, and thank you all for waiting the whole day to listen and share our experience uh, back at home. But I don't know why they keep putting this picture, and I really hate it. <laughs> I'm so skinny. <laughs> but it does show how far I have, I have come in conservation. When I first joined the Wales Alliance, I know nothing about lions. I'm just like other brothers of mine who want to grow up and become a man to kill lions. Oh, sorry. But when I was growing up, I wanted to say, how can I stop this? But thank you to Shivani, my, my boss, who have really changed me. I remember yesterday, also, Jane Goodall was telling a story of her mom inspired and wanted her to do what she wanted to do. But I didn't want to do that, what, what I'm doing now. But what I didn't know is that how many lions do we have in Kenya? What is happening with lions? The reason is why you see people saying, oh, they have killed their cows, they are killing, people are killing lions. They have no idea. It is really bad to say that we grew up and born in that area, but we know nothing about conservation, what is happening. All we know is a lion coming out of the bush and kill your cow or your goat. So they become an enemy. So when I joined the Wesley, I said, how can I stop this? So I saw my age group of warriors, and I, I thought it is a good idea to bring them on board because they spend a lot of time in the bush, hiding their livestock, moving from one place to another. And that is how we're stopping lions. In our culture, as Belinda mentioned, as a young boy growing up from 6 to 10, 15 years, you have to herd livestock like goats. From 15 years of age up to 30, then you'll be promoted to become a warrior like me. And you'll be given a different role to look after the cows and start moving up and down. And that way, that is the role you have to play within the society to prevent your livestock being attacked by lions. And the program I started called a Warrior Watch program, one of their objective is also to go and talk with other warriors about lion conservation. We didn't want to change our lifestyle, 
style of herding livestock and giving livestock water. At the same time, we want to use the same knowledge that we use to kill lions to stop killing of lions and to spread an awareness. So we go out early in the morning before the community release their livestock for grazing. And we see where the lions have hide themselves. And therefore we communicate that message back to the community and say, don't take your livestock in that bush. Naramat is behind that bush. And that way you have saved livestock being killed by lions and you have saved a lion being killed. And that way you have balanced the whole thing and built that coexistence. But I love this picture because Lotoi, who is my colleague and my assistant, when he first joined the Warsaw Lions, he also doesn't know about lions at all. I took him into the field. I said, let's go and look for lions because that is how we identify an individual lion, drawing the whisker spots and the earmarks. I showed him four lions. And I said, okay, let's try and identify that lion and draw. He said, how can I draw? How can I tell? They're all brown. <laughs> like, seriously, you're saying the whiskers spots, and they all have whiskers spots. Look. And now I'm very proud and very excited to be here today. Here, and my team back at home, I have no fear of now saying, Oh, I'm stressed because I know when the, the lions kill goats or cows or anything that, you know, nothing will be done. They are working there very hard to make sure that lions are, are safe. And we are, I have seen a lot of change of what have we achieved. We have triple lions population in our area, from 11 lions to 50 lions now. And it's because of these warriors. Thank you. But nothing demonstrates how effective our work has been than Naramat, the lioness who came from Samburu National Reserve to investigate and become so famous and the community give a name that will take care of. And that is how effective our work has been. You can hear the lions roar in the community, in the middle of the Manyatas, and they are not going to track them early in the morning as they used to be. And that is the sign of hope of lions coming in our villages now. It is part of our lifetime, li lifestyle now. She disappeared and came back just recently with this tree. And what is really excited is that it's only us it's not only us as a project who are very excited, saying that, oh, thank God, because we were so worried that what are we doing here? There's no lions in Westgate. Where is our camp here? Because Naramati just disappeared. But what is so excited is that when she came back, also the community said, oh, Naramata have come back home. Oh, we could hear her. And that is one of the big success that shown that the community have accepted lions in their home homeland. Having working with the warriors, we started what we call the Lion Kids Camp, showing the little kids, you are the hope. You are the hope for wildlife conservation in our area. And from the Warrior Watch program, the young little boys, before they become the age of 15 years, we need to train them and teach them about lions conservation because they're the one who go out and herd the livestock. They're the one who come across all these wildlife species. But we want to teach them so that when they become warriors like me, they're already conservationists. And this little boy called Cassian is one of the examples that the, that boy joined the lion kids camp that we started showing that you have a value, you are so important, you can become conservationist now, so that when you are circumcised, you are, st still, you are still conservation. And this boy keeps changing his name. Every time we have like kids come, we said we need 10, 10, 10, 10 boys, 10 boy, girls. He keeps changing. But when they all come to come, we look at him and he said, what's your name? 
he gave us a wrong name because he wanted to join the Lion Kids Camp. <laughs> and he's so excited, and that is what we want to make a life circle now, from generation to generation, because our culture goes from 15 years of age to 30 years, and then a new warrior demographic group, and by next year, I will be a junior elder, and this boy will become a warrior. And I want him so that when he become a warrior, he's not going to kill lions. And I'm very excited to say today, I'm very excited to be here with Mama Simba program, which they demand to say, what about us? And I'm very excited to have them here take you through about their program. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Mundeli. Hello, everyone. My name is Mbar Soroy. What are you doing? She's saying that the Lions have done uh, a lot of exciting things in our uh, in our area. I'm K. Wanda Manaka in America. Don't name it. Name a little man. I'm a go to Kaja Guyel. No, Matera, Bagara Guyel. No, we have never think of coming to America, but America uh, just miracle it's it that has happened because of the lions. What about being as your program? Manda Manaka was on by a man when it was a lion or link. So she's saying that when we started the, West, uh, the Mama Simba program, we really give the West Lions a very hard, uh, hard time. We couldn't even let them go through the road close to the village without stopping them. And when they started the program of warriors, they started with education. And the warriors started going to school and also go to look after the lions. And we said we also want education and also we want to be involved in lion conservation. And we told them it's very hard to send the women out into the bush to, to save the lions. And we demand we will do that. And we got the education from there. And we started the Sunday school, and now we are going to school four times a week. And now we know how to read and write. And I got from that little education a chance to go to driving school, and I'm very proud to say I'm the first woman from the village who can drive. And it's, if it's not the lions, we couldn't do all that. That's why we are here, it's because of the lions conservation that we are doing. And now from our little vehicle we have got, we go from village to village now, teaching people about lion conservation. And everyone is coming all over now, from villages to villages, just want to see me while I'm driving, because it's something that <laughs> never happened. <laughs> I share that our link. Thank you very much. Kada de da gani na da joina garai na gore kada asal ngatunyu mbanga ngasi amuko raba ba ye kijingi na school ne na gore ba 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 ye gere na numba ra ina gani. He's saying that what Mundeli is saying is actually true because when we first started the the Sunday school for the education, I used to write and I rip off my, my book because I, I don't know how to write. 
Kore tata aita shetene me ma sabun kara ya ena ba ba na shama sokunda ri ka yoro namba ajo e wa na i ka yoro namba torno na 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 ba to school. And from that little education now I can tell if my kid have passed the exam or not. If he get A I know if she has passed. If he get like percentage now I know. Na agora ba wo ne toko sama ma da em bala ina yol na no kai ngor raga na no ba ba ken na ide nyen kama i se ngan before that little education we got if i found any early in the morning any paper there around or a book i will rip off and just light the fire ko re da da em bala ba ken kara ba ko ba ken ma da em bala ina joro da da na na wo na ra ba ben kama and now every paper i see i just pick it up and i ask them what is this and i keep it properly Na ko ko re dal nga tun ga ta san bai ki to ko leng to ngo ba ngo leng wo leng wo leng. And he's saying lions have done a lot a lot and a lot of things in our area. Amu yo munda anda mono ki tikita mana so mata ngo ba. Because now 20 women are the mama simba women and they all get education. Ko re ne ni ada mono ko boko ra ge 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 ro ro da mono al nga tunyo. And all those women who are working within villages by villages talking about land conservation. Now we're talking about the young age and who are young, old, who are young. Me da ma ma isha ma ilorai. Kadal dalanga tunywa jaga taga ishunya tanga banga mo katubula ba na ne yarangwe si tanga banga kumoko oling. And what is really painful for me because I'm uh, I I'm very old. I have born and raised when there was so many wildlife, and I've seen they can disappear, and um, I don't want lions to disappear. Amukora bango ina ti nyogi nanga ngoji ne julo joku no pa na shamu nyo si woleng na korel nga tunyo pe na merisel nga tunyo ro ti mara and in a place where i was born in here our village there used to be so many lions and now there's almost like none and i can tell that lions will disappear soon na korel nga tun ke marda dia baki tana ra subati shonye mata tana mara do aganya sho yi wage ne guru guru ra boi tere tankang And he's saying lions are very even beautiful and really good and even looking at them in the field you want always always want like to pick one and take home. Na ko ko re la ko ni ngatu nyona ta ta liki ata munwe sha ka bak na ishunya ma ta ki jo bak ke ishunya mke ishuna ngo la ngam mo gure abaki e to ganya ta ngo bang. And he's saying that because uh, they are going to be very extinct and we are really trying hard to make sure that they are not going to disappear because of land degradation and also there is no much prey so we are really collaborating and really working hard to make sure that they don't disappear na gada na ko ro re community a a a a jo na ga mun ko ta na nya so ma mu so ma na ga ta de no ko and we are really talking to the community so that they don't uh, kill them whenever they kill their livestock so we are really uh, achieving that na igi yo do ni ya ku ku ta ne ki pe ki ta na igu tum mo to buru a ku ku mo amu ke suba ti ke ta sta yo nto ko sab ko leng to ko bang and we really want like to make sure that they are very safe and we want to make sure that they are not going to be extinct uh, very soon in our area amu ko ra bang ya ra ne me di ma te ke sam ta ba ki ke sam ta ba ki nga tu nyo to ko bang because we have seen also education so many children have got scholarship and because of the lions Uh, who are uh, not able to go to school and now they are educated nei somanta mano go yota ko na na ati america nei to soma ba gei and uh, we have got a chance to come to america and it, now you can just read a little bit and it's because of the lands na go a shetin da o lenga mu ke ki chamel nga tunyi na ke ramaza o lenga to ngo ba ngo lenga mu ndo go ngubu so thank you very much and uh, i'm promising you that we are going to work very hard to make sure that the lions are safe. Naramati za bagani. Thank you. Aya. Eh, mabedi. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So Okay, when I send the list, you know. Aya, so. Okay, I lied. It really was a woman's empowerment talk. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you despair about whatever is happening with the wildlife, think of these women. Think of these women. Think of the power that they have. Think of the fact that they for them this was like going to the moon 
to come and tell their story so that you know about lions and you know about lion conservation. It was that big a deal, this trip. It really is. But they, but they are up against a lot. Through their landscape is going to come these things. Oil pipelines, electric lines, roads, railways, things that other than them, most of their village cannot imagine. And I'm sure you're thinking that I'm going to tell you from my childhood story that, oh my gosh, this is horrible, the government is destroying everything and we are here to stop it. But we're not. We are actually working with the government. Together with the incredible Grevy Zebra Trust, we have a partnership and we have decided and we have seen that we can work with government to make sure that their needs that wildlife needs are taken into consideration while all this is happening. And I have great news to report. When we started this project just over a year ago, the longest heated oil pipeline in the world was going to pass directly through the lactating zone for Grevy's zebra. I think you remember when, what Belinda said about how critical that stage of life is, and that, was, that is the last lactating zone. But because of our partnership with each other, with other, part, with other partners within the landscape and with government, our national government have diverted around that area. This is a huge, huge win. So, we have to keep working at a national level, and I am extremely passionate about getting more Kenyans involved in wildlife. It is critical. For me as a Kenyan, there are two lions that I carry around almost all the time, every time I have a note or a coin, because they are on our coat of arms. We cannot let lions disappear. You heard in Parasuroi. We cannot let lions disappear. I can't let lions disappear. They're too important to me. So we have to have these conversations on a national level. And five days before we started this trip, my dream came true. We were able to hold the first wildlife conservation symposium, our first wildlife conservation symposium in a, uni in a university bring students together to talk about why this is important. Students from all over the country, 10 universities came to discuss this. And I'm not just talking about conservation biology students and, and you know, environmental students preaching to the choir, no. In that room were architects, engineers, construction managers, the new captains of industry. And we talked to them about why this is important. And during that time, my favorite moment was when the whole room shouted, conservation is for everyone. And we really, really believe it. It is for everyone. It is not just for the people fighting hard and living alongside wildlife. And it is also not just for Kenyans. It is for everyone. And I look around this room and I'm so thrilled to see people who have run alongside us to support the work that Iwaso Lions has done to make sure that lions don't disappear from Kenya, from Africa, from the world. We still need your help. Our bioinfrastructure project needs funding. We still need, Jenneria really needs a new car. I'm just gonna <laughs> say it, I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> He's, he's responding to conflict all the time, and he's, his car is not working very well. <laughs> and for continued Kenya lion awareness, we need help. But we're so grateful that there's so many people in this room who have joined and who hopefully will join the Iwaso Lions family to keep lions in the wild and to make sure that lions don't disappear. Asheta or Ling. Asante sana. Thank you.